Well, the World Health Organization wants you to stop eating meat so that you can depend on highly processed foods instead. Are you game for this? Yes, sign me up for that fake meat. Okay, we're going to talk about the fake meat industry and ask this question. Is this an enlightenment movement or is it a new way to remove your ability to feed yourself and concentrate power in the hands of a few? <laughs> Now, I am not here to talk down vegetarianism or veganism at all. I think you should make your own choices about what you eat consciously. It is not my place to tell you what to eat. Um, I feel like I used to feel that way. I was a lot more of a like radical liberal who would be like, you don't care about the planet. You should make these choices, right? I don't feel like that anymore, especially since researching for this show and this newsletter. The more I research things, the more I realize that people should be free to make their own decisions and not talk down to mea culpa, wow. right? Um, but there is no doubt a war on people who eat meat as planet haters. In fact, Christiana Figueres, a global climate campaigner and former leader of the United Nations climate change body, once said this about people who eat meat. She says, how about restaurants in 10 to 15 years start treating carnivores in the same way that smokers are treated? If you want to eat meat, they can do it outside the restaurant. What? So if you eat meat oh my God. to the concentration camp with you, scarlet the, letter. This is coming, guys. Sin tax. Holy smokes. Right? Yeah. Okay. But let's look at what you eat instead and if it's any better for the planet if you are eating these plant-based meat substitutes. Uh, the two biggest players in this space are Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. Um, Beyond Meat has been a Wall Street journal, a Wall Street darling for the last year, and Impossible Foods is said to be uh, filing for an IPO. UBS estimates that the plant-based food business will hit $85 billion in sales by 2030. Now, the main narrative around these plant-based alternatives is that they are good for the environment because the meat industry is responsible for high carbon emissions. That's what they say. That, but that's true. The meat industry mass producing this amount of meat is bad for the planet. Um, and Americans eat more meat with every meal than any other country on the earth. Um, and in increasing quantities, right? And so the meat industry is happy to sell you those products. And they use up a lot of water. Uh, they are responsible for a lot of pollution because when you mass produce, when you mass farm animals, they require a lot of antibiotics. Those things leak into the earth by way of the waste because animals don't absorb all of that in their body. Um, it is responsible for carbon emissions via the animal's flatulence as well as other sort of machinery in the shipping process. So this is true, right? But does going meatless actually help the environment? And are these meatless products the answer so first, the carbon effects of vegetarianism. Now, vegetarians like to say that by not eating meat, they reduce their carbon footprint by 50%. But that is misleading because you have to be a vegan to hit that 50% number. That means you don't consume any products like eggs, cheese, honey, gelatin, um, and you don't buy any leather or wool products either. But if you're full vegan and you hit this reduction of 50%, what that is is reduction of 50% of your food-related carbon emissions. But the food-related emissions of most humans is really small. It's like 10% of your personal emissions, thereby reducing that by 50% is really only hitting about 4.3% if you're a vegan, right? Okay. So, okay, it's not nothing, but it's not 50% of your whole carbon footprint, right? Right. Unless you're Henry David Thoreau and you live without a cell phone, without any kind of automated anything, without electricity, whatever. M most vegans are not that. Right. Right. Um, now- So most of your emissions comes from Riding your car, using your cell yeah. phone, your car, your heater, the electricity in your house, the the data centers that you plug into to work, that kind of thing. Now, are these diets better for your health, though? It's debatable because a vegan who eats mostly unprocessed fruits and vegetables is a very different person living on a very different diet than the vegan who's eating these processed alternatives, such as Beyond Meat, right? <laughs> If your diet is made up of these meat alternatives, that's something different. So let's look at the ingredients for Beyond Meat, uh, water, pea protein, and this canola oil, expeller pro processed canola oil, 
refined coconut oil, rice protein, natural flavors, yeast, cocoa butters, um, and these these other types of, of things. Now let's look at... Well, hold on. I want to go through because I can't okay. even pronounce half of this stuff. Like what is methyl... Uh, what was that? Methyl cellulose? Methyl cellulose, methyl cellulose is, is, I believe... Um, it's like a powder product. Uh, there also is zinc sulfate, nanochiamide, um, pyridoxine, hydrochloride. So, um, I can't even pronounce half this stuff. I mean, yes. Philip probably, you know, is a molecular biologist in his uh, previous life, might be able to pronounce some of that stuff, but. I don't even know what some of that stuff is. Okay, let's look at the Impossible Burger ingredients. Again, water, soy protein concentrate, sunflower oil, coconut oil, and then these other um, pieces of... Now, uh, some of these other chemicals are accounted for in terms of um, fertilizers and, uh, chem and uh, chemicals that go on plants, um, weed killers, that kind of thing. Pesticides. Pesticides, thank you. Yeah. Um, and we are going to talk about that later. But the major component here, the ingredients listed first, are these processed oils, sunflower oil, canola oil. Uh, they used to be made with palm oil. A lot of them have removed that. These oils are not good for you, unequivocally speaking, right? Because they cause inf inflammation, cancer. Well, they're, they're processed at such high heat temperature that, yes, they then have carcinogenic effects. In fact, some experts, such as author Mark Sisson, um, say that they cause inflammation for hours after consuming them, much longer than a cigarette even causes right. inflammation of the arteries, right? So if you smoke a cigarette, you do get inflammation of your arteries, but for less time than when you consume these oils, these processed oils. Um, also, they are not organic. They require more pesticide use than an animal does. So you're ingesting these processed oils raised on a steady diet of fertilizer and pesticide, right? Okay, so what of their impact on the planet? According to some studies, on par with meat. Uh, in fact, these oils contribute to deforestation and the amount of farmland that they require has increased exponentially. So let's look at this chart that shows us um, the greenhouse gas emission of growing these types of things, right? Palm oil's the worst. Which is at the top of the list there. Right, which is not amongst the ingredients that we just talked about in these products, but a lot of other vegan products do use a lot of palm oil. Soybean oil was in those things. Rice, rapeseed oil, sunflower oil. Um, so the oils are the worst, right? Cane are some, sugar. Some yeah. of the worst things. So it's like... It's the, you know, the land use, yes, it's the farming, it's the animal feed, it's the processing, so obviously um, it's the transport of them, it's the retail, it's the packaging of them. All of those things contribute to high amount of greenhouse gas emissions. That's why a 2003 study of meat versus plant-based diets found that both are not sustainable if they are based on these oil-based products. The study found that plant-based diets were more sustainable than the average meat-based diet in a limited sense, but this is 10 years ago and demand for these products has skyrocketed yeah, because so we they... tell ourselves that, oh, at least it's not meat, right? Right. And then, of course, if you think about the transportation of these boxes, you know, freezing these patties and shipping them around the world, these yes. fake meat sausages that are being shipped all over the place well but meat is frozen and shipped all over the earth too if you read um the book uh the secret life of groceries there's a whole thing about the frozen shrimp industry and that's awful right so it's not it, we're not apples to i mean those things are apples to apples shipping things around the world that are not you know this we're not talking farm to table right here um if we were it would be a much different calculation now the major problem is that these product, products require large industrial farming, right? Huge crops of seeds for oils. And this will create more food insecurity. Consider this statistic from Dr. Joseph Merkel, an osteopath. He says, industrial agriculture uses 75% of available farmland, yet produces just 30% of food consumed globally. Small biodiverse farms use 25% of land and provide 70% of our diet. 
So if the industrial agriculture share continues to rise, it will eventually kill the whole planet and eliminate any possibility of growing food. Oh. So they're telling you, don't eat meat. That means you're a sinner, right? Eat these processed food instead and put your diet in the hands of a few powerful companies. Right. The Great Reset. Right. Yes. This is the consolidation of power. We're going to buy up all of these farms in the Netherlands and, and the United States, run them out of business, get rid of all of your, your livestock, and use these farms to create these plant-based processed garbage foods. Right. Um, it's hard to argue with his point that once living animals are eliminated and replaced by patented plant-derived alternatives, private companies will control the food supply and therefore control the people. Yeah. Right? Well, and then also you think about, I mean, this absolutely that's the case. You control the people. When you control the food supply, you control you control the people. And if you eliminate all of this plant-based, you eliminate all of the meat and you just provide us with all of this processed garbage, then of course you need to swoop in and provide us with healthcare and vaccines and all of and yes. you need to be able to help us now that we're all getting cancer from your ridiculous food supply, yes. right? So I hope there's some sort of a biopharmaceutical complex of vaccines that would be available and things that can help me in the case that I start getting sick from all of your cancer causing right. problems. Now, when you sort of poo poo on the meat industry, what's not being said is that Americans don't need meat with every meal in double servings, right? And so if we were to sort of change the composition of our diet, we wouldn't have to have these high greenhouse emissions from so much meat, right? And we don't have to replace it with a plant-based alternative. We can replace it with, I don't know, fruits and vegetables, like wholly sourced things, well, right? I mean, and if you go back fact, to like, the, I was gonna say, if you go like back to the 1950s, right? When we had smaller portions, you might've had a piece of meat and you had vegetables and you had, you know, more of a balanced diet and you didn't, or more of a balanced dinner plate, a, a balanced breakfast. Then you have like Kellogg's that comes in and starts pushing the cereal, yes. you know, cornflakes in the morning instead of having eggs and having bacon and having things that, you know, on the farm, getting away from butter, getting away from all of these things. Yes. If we could go back to just living, you know, eating maybe not as giant portions that we're now with advertising forced down our throats in the United right. States. Now, we're not saying here that there's not benefits of eating vegetarian lifestyle or eth choosing that ethically. Absolutely, those things are true. Um, but we are seeing this sort of in some places, like it, the, in wealthy nations, we think, oh, we'll replace this with this like super expensive, you know, meat based alternative, which is bougie now, right? Or we see in Brazil, people are learning to actually grow for themselves in this movement towards urban farming. Take a look. The Wall Street Journal reporting that urban agriculture is growing. And to my mind, that is a good thing. Do you have that video? Philip, yes, that one. This one. Yes. There we go. Um, so, you know, these people here, you have to imagine in these like poorer neighborhoods in Brazil where they take these strips of land and do these urban community gardens, they are not serving that with a Beyond Meat patty that costs $4. I got to imagine, right? Right. Um, also, this the farm, the idea too, we, we've covered a couple of studies here on the show over the past year about different meat-based farms um, where in California specifically, where they've actually gone carbon negative on their production. Yes. Um, and so there are, I think there's quite a, there's a lot of marketing and negative marketing around the meat industry. And there's quite a number of farms that are actually doing the sustainable thing and actually providing meat and actually have less of an impact than a lot of these plant-based alternative farms. Yes, you are right. Um, again, if your diet is constantly evolving to something that you cannot duplicate right. at home, you are contributing to the Great Reset, right? So can you make your, I mean, again, if you look at this ingredients, again, can you make this meatless patty on your own? Most likely not. You can't grow these things to the quantity well, yeah, and process the, like, let's say you grow sunflowers and you want to use sunflower oil to make your own meatless patty to this like consistency that they have it right then you have to process it at a super high can you do it right can i get cellular dextrose can i get um 
uh, modified starch. Can I get yeast extract, soy, leg or uh, mixed tester furlough? I can't stuff. I can't pronounce. Right I, now we are like kind of homesteader fans in our house. So we constantly ask ourselves, could we do this if the global economy shut down? Right. Could we press our own olive oil? Could we like we do have chickens? Could we eat them? I am not there yet. I, I feel like we eat the I, eggs. We we do eat the eggs. Right. Um, my brother in law was like, we could do it. I know how. He was raised in Mexico and he absolutely knows how to butcher chickens. And I just can't do it yet. Um, but I feel like if it were like, I, I do know how to butcher a fish. Clayton's got, um, although badly, my father in law taught me and then like pushed me off and was like, get out of here. You're not doing a good job. Um, but I could do it, right? Well, it's not even called butchering a fish. It's called filleting a fish. Yes. So I, oh, so um, yeah. not well, but I could do it. So again, we're not telling you what to eat, but if you look at your diet and you're like, none of this could be replicated, it absolutely is dependent on industry, then you have to ask yourself, am I playing into the Great Reset? And if I talk down to people who are eating meat, is that further the propaganda for the Great Reset? Um, you know, again, telling people to eat this fake meat though, or eat less meat is incredibly ethnocentric. When you look at the statistics around the world, 1.5 billion people are vegetarians around the world, but only 75 million of them are vegetarian by choice. Mostly it's because of poverty. And the statistics do show that when a community moves out of poverty, that population is more likely to start choosing to eat meat. I mean, that look at my brother-in-law is right. like perfect example, right? So um, like he was raised where there was like one egg for a family of five and they would have to split it up. But now that they have a bit more money, they are able to share a bit more meat inside of that pop inside of their family. <laughs> um, of course, none of this is to ignore the negative effects of mass farming animals. That is unequivocally not a good thing, right? right. L Bjorn Lundberg in his book, he actually sees a lot of potential in this lab created meat. Um, that is meat created from the stem cells of animals. That is real meat from an animal that never lived, that never had consciousness, that never was an animal. It's just like you take the chicken breast and cre and dupe and clone it. So now right? I'm not there yet on that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm on there. That. I, I'm like I, I, yeah. I'm the same with you. Like uh, butchering the chickens. I get that. And but like the lab created meat, I can't. Uh, I'm not there yet. But uh, this generates up to 96 percent fewer greenhouse gas emissions. But then again, the question remains: Can you grow it at home? No, I cannot. Right. Then again, you're du you're, you're relying cells. you're relying on the lab. You're relying on the same problem that is the processed meat uh, processed uh, fake meat industry yes right yeah so is it any better uh, i i, I don't have know. to ship it to you they're gonna have to put it in a box freeze it in a patty and ship it to you you know um or you could go to your local local butcher you could go to you know, have your local farms farm to table yeah. and buy your stuff locally get your tomatoes and everything locally and um prepare your prepare your burgers that way yes so i don't know how do you feel I about that philip this stem cell meat well the the lab created meat i'm okay with actually like that doesn't bother me but that's i've been in labs um one of the things that's interesting is uh what you were talking about like where where they're kind of controlling the food supply by controlling the population something else that people need is energy and one of the things i don't know if you're familiar with uh it's the bex like bio uh bioenergy carbon capture storage mm -hmm. where they they use green crops to pull uh carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere then they burn those uh, crops for energy. So like in a, in like a power plant, capture that carbon energy and sequester it. So it's basically like they're, they're also oh, yes. looking at ways of using like massive, uh, agricultural resources for energy as a carbon capture. So it like at that point, like all of this agricultural land that's being bought up, you know, like in that they're, they're confiscating can also be used to produce all of our energy taking away, you know, like coal and things like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is about controlling people. I mean, really, at the end of the day, when you can you can buy up all these farms, you you can then people, you know, and that's why they're going after. That's why we saw the attacks on the Amish recently. You, yeah. you know, going after these small farmers. Um, I think that's absolutely what's happening here. Yeah, but I think this sort of like superiority that people who eat these plant based nuggets and burgers is misplaced. Um, and not all vegetarians are like that. In fact, I have a friend, my sister's friend, um, who said she'd rather eat, she's a vegetarian. She's like, oh no, I'd rather eat real meat than eat those things. <laughs> um, 
you know, because yeah. she chooses vegetarianism for ethical reasons, but she will not eat those things. And so, um, yeah, because if you want the health benefits, that's not the way to get it. Yeah. These things that cause inflammation are causing cancer. 